Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Battlefield 5 in 2023. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we'll go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU. So I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for Nvidia. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So right energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, full screen mode, make sure that you're playing full screen, all the other setting, I was getting some random stuttering, make sure also uh, for your resolution and the amount of Earth that you're playing native with your monitor. Um, yeah, I have a 1440p monitor at two, uh, uh, 240 Hertz and by default it was 1080p at 60, so super important to look at this. Field of view is a question of preference, honestly, but if you add more field of view, you will lose FPS. So if you limit it right now with your PC, don't go too crazy. By the way, the field of view is the vertical uh, field of view. So you have a conversion at the right, as you can see over there. Uh, so normally I play my game at 104. So that's why I put a 88. And uh, for the view kill, honestly, you can make a little bit more because you want to see further uh, around you. But again, it, you will lose a lot of FPS if you do that. ADS field of view, I'm not using this. Motion blur, definitely zero. You don't want motion blur in any FPS game. Uh, ADF dust effect, go with off and everything else at off. It's for visual, you don't want distraction. You want pure visibility. So everything at off, you will uh, save like five to six percent in your FPS. So it advanced. So for the API, you can play DirectX 11 and 12. And back in the day, it was a weird time. Uh, a lot of games were still running in DirectX 11 and those new games at DirectX 12 had a lot of issue. So if your a GPU is brand like brand new or two or three years ago, you can definitely test DirectX 12. You will have more FPS than the 11, but a lot of people are getting more stuttering in DirectX 12. So they prefer DirectX 11. So less FPS, but more stable. Also, if your game is crashing, it's probably because of DirectX 12. So go with DirectX 11. And one more thing, if you want to use uh, ray tracing, DLSS, you really need to boot it in DirectX 12. Uh, HDR, I'm putting this one at off. Uh, resolution scale, play at 100. You don't want to upscale or downscale this game. Future frame rendering, this one is a bit tricky. Your game is very smooth when you're using it but the input lag is crazy. You can't really play a game like this. So I'm not recommending it, except if you really want to play Battlefield 5, you just want fun and you're, you, you're struggling to run this game, definitely go with on, but you will see it's pretty crazy. The amount of input lag, if you compare what you're doing with your mouse what, and what you're seeing in your screen. For vertical scene, I recommend to go with off. Again, less input lag. For the GPU memory restriction, you can put this one at on. It's pretty cool, uh, this option. I prefer when they show me how many VRAM that I'm currently using, depending on my parameter. But I guess they just lock your VRAM, so you will not have any issue with it. So for the graphic quality, go with custom. Texture quality and texture filtering. If you have more than a 6 gig of RAM, you can have VRAM, sorry, you can go at ultra. 4 gig go at high, and if you lower it in 4 gig of your RAM on your GPU, go even lower than this. Lighting quality, I recommend medium or low, really depend. 
uh it, it's pretty huge honestly you will gain like 8 to 12 fp 12 percent of fps if you're comparing ultra to medium if you're playing on a very old computer definitely go with low with this one it re really helps effect quality i recommend to go with low uh if you're it's more for stabilizing your fps when you see an explosion and stuff like that if you're if you're getting like random 20 to 30 fps drop it's probably because of your effect quality so i recommend to go with low post process quality this one again uh it's pretty huge also it's like three percent for each bracket so i recommend to go medium because you're getting a decent visual quality i feel like at low you're losing a lot of stuff so my recommendation is go at medium but again if you're struggling with your fps go with low Mesh quality and terrain quality, I recommend to go II because it will help with performance. So I, when I say performance, it's more inside of the game. So we, you, it's easier to see enemy with those settings. And even mesh, honestly, you can go at ultra. But again, you're going to lose FPS. So if you're struggling with your FPS, I recommend to go medium and medium over there. Undergrowth quality, you can go with medium. You will gain a nice 5% boost in your FPS. For the anti aliasing you don't have a lot of options. TA at I honestly, the game looks very blurry. So I recommend to go with low and you will save 4% in your FPS. Ambient inclusion. This one, honestly, you have a couple of options. Uh, if you want vis pure visibility and FPS, you will go with off, but the game looks very flat. So if you want to have a decent experience with your image quality, go with SSAO. If you want pure, just kill some people. Let's go with the off option. And the last one is high fidelity object amount. I recommend this one at low. You will have a nice 6% boost in your FPS. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Battlefield 5 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace!